Okay, so please rest your hands in your lap. And close your eyes. And let your attention begin to come to a more internal place, acknowledging that the external world is something that you care for, you care about. But here during your yoga practice is a time for you to be renewed. So that the ways in which we're caring for the external world, we can sense we're doing that from wisdom or grace, skillfulness. We welcome your breathing to help bring you inward. So the inhale can go down into the pelvis. And this means that we want to relax any unnecessary belly tension. So the breath can come down. You can also lift your rib cage and your heart so that the upper torso is lighter. The lower torso doesn't have the, the burden of us slouching or having poor posture. And then the in-breath is even more possible as it drops down into your pelvis. Then bring your awareness to the exhale. Now on the inhale, what I'm saying is we want to release belly tension to receive the inhale. When we practice more actively, we actually do say, take a deep breath in or draw in a deep inhalation. So we release abdominal tension to receive the breath, but on the exhale, we have to bring in some abdominal tone to support the breath and the parting. So if the inhale fills the pelvis, your exhale beginning there, helps to usher the breath upward and outwards through your nostrils. Now having a sense of that, start lengthening your inhale. So you're gonna now partner with what your body does on the inhale naturally. You're gonna to think to yourself, okay, inhale deeply, slowly make the breath more expansive and a little bit longer. At the top of that, there's gonna be a slight pause and then you exhale again from the base of the belly, the base of the pelvis, and imagine the exhale going a little bit longer, perhaps equal to the length of your inhale. Do that one more time. Notice the quality of your concentration or your focus today. Sensing that that can improve during your practice. Notice what it is now. And then you can bring your hands together at your heart. And we'll begin with a chant this morning. It's called Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunaktu. It means the teacher student chant. And a reminder that your teacher is within you, and so is your student. And I'm playing the role of teacher here on the outside, and you're playing the role of student. But in each of us is a teacher and a student. Sahana vavatu, sahana bunaktu, savedyang karava. Hey, 
Jasminavahi Tamastu Mavi Vishavahi Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Savedyang Karavai Tejas in Navari Tamas to Mavid Vishavai Sahana Vavatu Sahana sitting if you're not now sitting in a chair go ahead and do so we're gonna do a few warm-ups right here from the chair seat let me push my seat back so this is to get the neck and shoulders ready for practice it's gonna require a little bit more limberness in the upper back neck and shoulders and I'll take these off because I'm further back from my computer those are my concussion computer glasses to, truth be told, you're a little bit fuzzy to me when I don't have any glasses on. And I broke my glasses the other day. They were, I guess they were old enough to break easily. I wasn't being, you know, forceful with them, but they broke. So when you're sitting in the chair, sit on the front edge of your chair. Take the heel of your right hand and push out to the right. You might get like a zing down your arm. And then keeping that pressure out, when you exhale, tip your left ear towards your left shoulder and bring the heel of your right hand down. And then inhale, raise your right arm up and center your head. And you exhale, tip your left ear down, press down with the heel of your right hand. That zing might get bigger, might get less. Inhale up to center. Exhale, tip and lower, press out vigorously with the heel of your right hand. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower. One more time, inhale to come up. And exhale, tip down. Now keep your head tipped to your left. With your right hand, hold the seat of your chair. Or if your arm is long enough, you'll hold the leg of the chair. Depends on what kind of chair you have and the length of your torso and the length of your arm. And then with your chin, come in towards your right collarbone and come across towards your left shoulder. And go back and forth between those. So Inhale towards your right collarbone. And exhale towards your left shoulder. Inhale right collarbone. And exhale left shoulder. Now raise your gaze, look to your left. Raise your right arm, turn your palm face up. And then exhale, return to center. And just notice how the two sides of your neck are feeling in relationship with each other. And take the heel of your left hand and press out. 
Okay, and as you're pressing out, you're going to tip your right ear towards your right shoulder as you lower the heel of the left hand down kind of vigorously. Right? Inhale, come up to center. Exhale, tip as you lower the heel of your left hand. Inhale, raise up, center your head. Exhale, lower your right ear, bring the heel of your left hand down. Inhale, raise your left arm, center your head. Exhale, lower. A couple times more. And of course, the two sides of your neck might be quite different. And the shoulders may be quite different. And go at the pace that is your breath cycle. Mine might be longer or shorter than yours. This is our last one as we come up. And then press down, tip your right ear towards your right shoulder. And now you're going to hold the seat of the chair with your left hand. And then bring your chin towards your left collarbone. So that means you might be feeling the back side of your neck and also the side. So from the top of the shoulder blade up towards the base of your skull. Those are your scalene and upper trapezius muscles. So glide across your chin towards your right shoulder. And then towards the collarbone, left collarbone. And come across towards your shoulder. Make them open smooth, just as you need them to be. So this is like giving your neck a massage. You're not being demanding with the neck right now. As you glide across, consider an inner attitude of appreciation for your body and for your neck, whatever sensations it's giving to you right now. Let's go one more time towards your right shoulder. And then as you raise your gaze to look to the right, bring your left arm up, palm face up. And then exhale to release, come to center. And take notice of how things are feeling and what influence that might have for your mind or your mood. Okay, and then please get your yoga strap and make a loop in it. And I will get my yoga strap, just a moment. So the loop, we do it so it's shoulder width, right? So something like this, where the loop is at shoulder width like that. We're still going to be sitting, but I want to give you a little bit more view here. So let me scoot back from my computer, because you're going to straighten the arms with the loop. What happens is then that you can press your wrists out against the strap to give more support to your arms and shoulders, and then raise your arms up overhead. When you exhale, squeeze the elbows wide so the strap goes behind your head. It doesn't touch your head. And then inhale to go up as you press the hands out into your strap. Good. And exhale, elbows down and wide. Squeeze back. Good. Inhale to raise up. Now for some of you, it's going to be hard to get the arms to go down with the strap not hitting your head. That can improve as we improve your flexibility. So when we inhale to go up, let's aim to have the head upright. If you need to, when you exhale, bring your chin down towards your throat. So it's not just that you're dropping the head forward, it's that you're bringing the chin in towards your throat. And that's going to give you a little bit more clearance for the arms to go behind you. So the strap won't hit you in the head. Okay, one more time. And inhale to go up. And exhale, float your arms forward and down and release the strap to your lap and let both arms dangle. So what you're going to have is a chance to feel the circulation now running down, like from your head, down the sides of your neck, through your shoulders, into your arms. Yeah. Good. Now take the same strap and sit on the front edge of your chair so there's room behind you. You put the strap around your wrists behind you. And that means that my hands are shoulder width if I don't know how to show it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so the hands are behind you and you can press out against the strap. Now, 
because I've worked with a huge variety of people, I, and I can say that the people with the most stiff shoulders actually were the correctional officers at the prison. So for them, we had to make the strap wider. So when you put your arms behind you, if you feel like you can't get the hands into that strap, it's a tightness in the shoulder joint that we can work on. But make the strap wider for right now so that you can press your arms back like this in the strap. Press your shoulders back. When you inhale, lift your chin and look up. When you exhale, bring your chin down towards the center of your sternal clavicular notch, which is that little opening at the top of the sternum. And inhale to look up, lift your heart, your collarbones, your open your throat, lift your gaze. And exhale, chin down towards your throat. And again, inhale to go up. And exhale to glide down with your chin. Here's the last one. Inhale, rise up. Squeeze your shoulders back as you exhale. Level your head off. And then drop the strap to only one hand and rest your hands in your lap. And notice again that you are shifting the landscape, literally, the circulation, the myofascial planes, the neurological responses, your breath, you're shifting that all across here and on the upper back side too. Okay, let me move to my other camera and I'm going to go back to my chair, see if I can do this without my glasses on. I know some of these movements from memory, so let's see. Yeah, okay, got it. All right, let me get my chair. And so you're gonna sit sideways on the chair. So you can keep your chair facing forward, and I'm gonna turn mine to be sideways, so you can see. So if you sit sideways on your chair like this, let's call this my right side, and this is my left side for right now you're going to twist to the right in your chair. Lengthen up through your spine. Let me bring my microphone back. One piece of muscle memory got forgotten there. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're going to twist to the right. And what I'd like you to try out is on the inhale, gaze over your right shoulder. But on the exhale, gaze back over your left shoulder. So the twist from here to here is going to be consistent. The movement is going to be for your head and your throat. Right. So let's hold the upper back of the chair, please. Twist to your right. Breathe in as you're gazing to the right. And exhale, rotate your head to your left. Inhale, twist right. Gaze right. Exhale, gaze to your left. And as you're turning your head, try to sense how you lift the base of the skull during rotation. So inhale, gaze to your right. Exhale, gaze to your left. Again, inhale, right. And exhale, left. One more time, inhale, gaze to your right. And then exhale and gaze to your left. Let's stay here for a few moments and notice how do you keep your pelvis centered, your heart and chest turn to your right, your gaze to your left, lengthen your spine, welcome your breathing, inhale to the low pelvis, exhale from your lower pelvis. and then exhale to unwind. And it would not surprise me if you feel a little bit like a barber pole <laughs> or you feel like a zigzag, right? Because some parts of your body were getting an opening and some parts were getting a contraction. Okay, spin it up to the other side on your chair. I'll turn my chair. You don't have to turn your chair, you just have to turn yourself. Okay, and so we're gonna be facing the left side of the chair this time and you're gonna rotate 
Rotate left. Great. Inhale, gaze over your left shoulder. Lift the base of your skull. So when you exhale to gaze to your right, I don't want you to have too many crunchy sounds in your neck. You might have some. But try to keep the base of your skull lifted. Inhale, gaze left. So what you're doing is lengthening the spine, your cervical spine, as you're rotating your head. And we're going to continue. So inhale, left. Exhale to your right. Inhale left. Exhale right. Again, inhale left. And now exhale to the right. We're going to stay for a little while here. So Try to consider you've got your pelvis centered, chest and heart turn to your left, gaze to your right. Lengthen your spine. Imagine it like a slinky, the old-fashioned toy called the slinky. Old-fashioned, like from my childhood. <laughs> Maybe they still make them, I have no idea. Breathe in. And then exhale, unwind. And notice again, you might feel like a barber pole or like a little bit zigzag. And that's okay. Kind of expected, actually. Okay, and then I'd like you to come to standing to use the upper back of your chair. So when you stand, I'm going to turn mine to face as a profile. You can have yours to face whatever's comfortable for you. The reason that we're using the upper back of the chair is that it's taller. My hope is that you have a stable chair. So this is generally speaking, we call this, I call this a yoga chair. Other people call it a folding chair. But it's, I know that it's stable. It's not gonna fold when I'm using it. And it's not gonna tip towards me when I put my hands on it. So if you have, let's say one of your dining room chairs, and let's say when you put your hands on the top, it feels a little bit like it might tip backwards towards you. I would recommend the household item. Every household should have a 10 pound bag of rice. And you can put that on the seat of the chair so you know it's not going to be, your chair's not going to tip backwards. So we're going to place the hands then shoulder width or on the widest part of the chair that's possible and step backwards. This is called chair dog with the upper back of the chair. When you step back, place your heels more or less under your hips. So your feet are not farther back than your hips like that and they're not too close to the chair. And then rotate your triceps in towards your nose. So your shoulder blades will feel like they're widening across your upper back. Lift the base of your skull, just like you were doing in the twist we had a moment ago. I want you to lift there so that you can lengthen the back of your neck while you're in this position. And then deepen your breath down into your pelvis. You can call that the pelvic bowl or the pelvic basin. The way that I have my hands on my chair, because it's got a round surface, I'm able to have my hands sort of just on the round part at the edge of the chair. That may not be your experience, but I'd like you to sense that the pinky finger side of your hands have an important role to help you turn your elbows in, triceps in, and shoulder blades wide. And please inhale smoothly. And then press down against the chair with both hands. You've got to use your upper arm strength. Step forward towards the chair. One foot, second foot. Rise up and let the arms dangle. So you're going to feel this circulation returning again. Every time that circulation is returning, I want you to think of not just circulation of the blood in your body, but also your lymph system is having a response. So it's cleansing. You're revitalizing the circulation down to the fingers. Your limb system is also saying, hey, we have a job to do here. And we want that to be cleansing for the body. Okay, now we're going to step back with only one foot. So if you place yourself, so I'll call this my right foot, my actual right foot this time. Step back with the left foot like this. So that your left heel, my hope is it can come to the floor. Turn your foot a little sideways if you need to. 
and likely you're going to feel your left calf muscle, hello to the calves, and facing your hips to go forward. You may feel also your right hip and hamstring. So depending on how tall your chair is and how flexible you are, you can keep the hands as they are. Or you can walk your hands down to the seat of the chair. And I would like you to think about how do you lengthen your spine here, including keeping this gentle lift at the base of your skull. We're going to practice something that we would consider in yoga to be a cross crawl pattern. It's also going to challenge your balance. It's not a super hard thing to do, but neurologically we can become a little bit dysregulated if we have an imbalance in the physical system of balance in the body. So keeping that in your awareness, press into both feet and both legs. Breathe in while you're gazing down. And then exhale, gaze to your right without raising either ear. So your head stays in line with your spine. Inhale, gaze down. Exhale, gaze to the right. Inhale, gaze down. Exhale, gaze right. Once more, inhale, gaze down. And exhale, gaze to your right. Now consider picking up your right arm to reach to the right. Gaze steadily. If your arm is stretched out to the right, try gazing at your right thumb. So spread your fingers wide. And then you may try keeping your eyes at your thumb, but close your eyelids. It becomes more of a balance challenge. And then return yourself to the chair, to the upper back of the chair if you went down to the seat. And as you bend your right knee, float your left foot forward to meet your right foot. And if you pause again and just notice your body's going to have one of those cleansing responses. Circulation even from the hips to the heels and the lymph system associated with your pelvis, inner groin. Now keeping your left foot forward, step your right foot back and pivot your right heel to the floor behind you. And you can press into the chair for some stability here, but try to rely on your legs, including your outer hips. And you can make the decision again if you're someone whose chair height, your height, and your flexibility means hands to the chair seat is more suited for you, please do that. Keeping your head in line with your spine. This little practice is a cross crawl rhythm because we're moving the eyes across the midline of the body. So when you inhale, gaze down. And then exhale, gaze to your left. Inhale, gaze down. Exhale, gaze left. Inhale, gaze down. Exhale, gaze left. Inhale, gaze down. Exhale, gaze left. And then keeping your gaze to your left, if you have the extra balance for it and the strength, you raise your left arm out just so it's kind of horizontal to your shoulder and try gazing at your left thumb. And see if you might close your eyes. And then exhale, open your eyes, return your left hand to your chair seat, to the upper back of the chair if that's where you need to climb up to, and then step here right foot forward to meet your left foot and pause again to just notice the flush that your body's going to go through.
and then keeping your right foot pointing towards the chair, step your left foot back, using the chair for support here. So the left foot can be at this little angle, turned in slightly, and your right foot, I'm going to recommend you point it straight on with the chair. Okay, and raise your left arm up alongside your left ear. So on this one, I'm going to recommend you keep your hand on the upper back of the chair if that is your flexibility, your height, and the height of your chair. Or if your height is like mine, I'm not that tall, so the chair seat's not that far away from me, I come down to touch this part of the chair. For everyone, this is a side bend to the right. Your pelvis supports the side bend, so it has rotated right here. You've turned as if you were pouring tea. And let's breathe in. When you exhale, sweep your left arm up and wide. Gaze down to your right. Inhale, raise your left arm and gaze forward. Exhale, open your left arm, gaze down. So you're again using the cross hemisphere pattern of your brain, including your eyes. Inhale, gaze forward, left arm past your ear. Exhale, open as you gaze down. Inhale, raise your arm, rotate your head, try to synchronize those things so you're working at a level of synchronization between your mind, your body, and your breath. One more time, rise up. And one more time, open your left arm, gaze down past your right arm and right leg. Now, connect to your left low belly. And as you exhale, lift yourself upright, gazing to your right. And then you can turn the right toes in and try stepping your left foot to meet your right foot. There you go. Now we're going to turn it around. So you'll see the back side of my pose. Let me make sure this is close enough without pulling it off of the, the table. All right, so left foot forward and right foot back. And you can use the upper back of the chair and raise your right arm high. There is a side bend here. Based on your height or your flexibility, you can also use the seat of the chair. So we inhale, reach long through the right side of your body, and when you exhale, rotate your gaze down, open your right arm, and go slowly so you are synchronizing. So inhale, rotate your gaze, raise your arm. Exhale, rotate as you lower your arm. Now these two movements are smaller and larger in distance. Right? The turn of your head is less distance than the distance of your arm. So synchronizing those actually takes some concentration. So try it three times more. So each movement arrives at its destination simultaneously to the other movement. Here's the last one. Now, using your right low belly, root into your feet, and rise up to stand. Turn your left foot to be parallel with your right, and try taking your right foot to step back to meet your left foot. And see what's moving in your body now. Maybe many things are moving, right? But there is a flush that can occur. Now we'll do one more in the standing sequence and then we'll give your legs a little bit of a break. So what we're gonna do is, it's called the crescent lunge from the sun salutation. So if you're standing facing the chair, holding the upper back, 
Bend your knees and take your left toes back. For some of you, it's going to be really helpful to turn your foot sideways so that the back foot is a part of your balance system. For those of you working on balance, if you want to, you can keep the left heel lifted. And that means that you're using your foot and your arch muscles for your balance. You then zip the pubic bone up. Tone the muscles at the back of your pelvis, which should feel like the tailbone's going down. Draw the low belly in and raise only your right arm up. Now what we're going to do here, you can think of this as a challenge again for your brain. So of course stay right where you are, or you can practice this cross hemisphere pattern that I'm going to be doing. So on the inhale we are gazing forward and the right arm reaches up. Then exhale, open your right arm to the side and gaze over your left shoulder. So they're going opposite. Now inhale, return your gaze and your right arm at the same moment, so they arrive together. So exhale, right arm right, gaze left. Inhale, rise and center. Exhale, rotate, open your right arm. Inhale, rise and center. Exhale. One more time to center. And exhale, lower your right hand and step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. Second side. Take the right toes back and decide if you're someone who's going to put your back heel down. If that is your choice, just do your best to have the hips more or less going forward. Not completely, it's not possible for everyone's hip structure, but think less of turning to get your balance and more of aiming forward as you're able to. It might help you if you shorten your stride, your ability to aim the hips forward is going to increase. So you make little choices that support your own practice there. Raise your left arm. So here's the in-breath and we are centered with the nose and the left arm. And exhale, left arm left, gaze right. Inhale to center and rise. Exhale, open, gaze right. Inhale, center and rise. Exhale, gaze right, open left. Twice more. Practice synchronizing, even though your head is traveling less far than your arm needs to, synchronize the return. And then lower your left hand to the upper back of the chair and step your right foot forward. And notice one more time the, the flush that could be going through your body. You might feel like a little bit uh, swimmy in your head, that can happen sometimes, that should be settling down. So you're doing like a therapeutic activity for your brain, not just for your body. I'm going to put this sandbag on the floor, it's a little bit noisy. And I'd like you to take a seat once more in your chair. Sit on the front edge of your chair, please. and cross your right ankle over your left knee. Hello to your hips. <laughs> I know for lots of people we were indoors and very sedentary um, during the storms and the smoke and the fires. And then we go back out walking. So some of you might be like, oh yeah, I'm using these muscles again. So in this regard, when you cross your ankle over, make it a strong ankle so it's not like a flimsy, twisted ankle, so you're not sickling like this. So make it sturdy. 
Lift up through your spine and the crown of your skull. And then gently ease your torso forward, very slightly forward. Or for some people, much further forward. But your body should say yes to the choice you're making here. And try to sense from the inside how is your body receiving the inhale? What are you experiencing with your exhale? Keeping your ankle across the opposite knee, rise up with your inhale, cross your right hand to your left foot, give it a little hold there, take your left hand behind you on the chair seat and try twisting to your left with your upper back. It might surprise you that it will change how you experience your right hip as you're twisting to your left. And breathe in and remind, remind yourself that this is a practice where you're renewing, restoring, partly that means calming your mind and your body, but also increasing your vitality by releasing some of the places where we have been holding tension, physical or mental. As you exhale, rotate around to face forward. And place your right foot back on the floor. And cross your left ankle over your right knee. And sit up straight and tall. So this is my bionic hip, some of you already know. This is my metal hip, my titanium hip. This is my $200,000 hip. <laughs> it was an accident and a couple of surgeries and every other thing. So. I, Equal kindness to both sides, but a limitation on this side. You may also have some limitations, of course. Yoga welcomes you in spite of those. But when you're coming forward here, think of it as whatever tip the pelvis can do, not whatever slouching the torso can do. And then you breathe in and appreciate the life experiences that your body has navigated. Remind yourself this is a practice for nourishing, and that means calming the systems that would spend our vitality too fast, and revitalizing the systems that move vitality through us. So we, we release the physical tension, almost like releasing the leaves from the gutter so that the water can flow better in that system. As you inhale, bring your torso upright, hold your right heel with your left hand or reach across to somewhere on your right foot. And as you twist your upper body to your right, place your right hand on the chair seat behind you. And notice any changes that happen in your left hip just because you're twisting your upper body to the right. It is not surprising that it happens in this way. Everything in the physical body is actually tied together much like um, one large crochet um, artwork. You change one thread in a crochet and everything is influenced.
exhale, rotate to center and place your right foot back on the floor. Watching out for your cords and cables. Rest both hands in your lap. And try to get a sense of what now is echoing in you. Okay, now we're going to do something a little bit unusual. I'd like you to take both of your blocks like this and stack them on the right side of your chair. Put them at a tiny angle because you're going to step your right foot up here, almost like when you, I don't know if you guys do this or did this. I don't buy shoes anymore. I just have flip-flops, so there's no need to go shopping for shoes. But you might recall when they were measuring your foot as a child. Of course, you will put that in front of you, but step out almost in the same process. And try to press your right knee open in line with your toes. And if when you've placed your foot up on these blocks, you feel like you have to tip your pelvis over to hold your foot up here, then make one less block. Otherwise, I want your hips to be stable, so your knee is higher than your hip joint, and this part of the femur drops down so that it's more grounded to the chair. Take your right arm to the inside of your right leg to press it open, and please twist to your left. It would not surprise me if you feel your right inner thigh stretching a bit more when we twist the upper body to the left. So breathe into that opportunity. Yeah. And roll your left shoulder back so you have a sense almost like opening a sail on a ship. The twist, I was saying we're twisting the upper chest, upper torso, but your twist does also include awareness of the low belly twisting to your left. The mid belly twists to your left. Lower ribs, mid ribs, and the upper rib cage too. And when you exhale, please come around to face forward and step your right foot down. Let's do the other side. You can move your footstool over and place your left foot up. Okay, and when you place it, if you feel like your left hip is picking up off the chair, either try to get it to be grounded or you can lower the blocks under your foot. And take the left arm to the inside of your left thigh. So your pelvis is centered, but picture that you're turning the inner belly, then the mid belly, then your chest and heart. Twist to your right. Walk your right hand around behind you. Roll the right shoulder open like you're unfurling a sail on a ship. Breathing in and breathing out, just take your time. And one more time, breathing in. And then exhale, rotate to face forward and step your left foot back down so your feet can be hip distance apart and parallel. Turn your palms face down in your lap and just notice now when your body is releasing some of these tension patterns, it's possible that your mind starts to feel quite sleepy or heavy or tired. So you're having a cleansing response and your body has to use some of its energy to cleanse which means it will take energy away from like mental cogitation or um, mental processing. It's like this also when you've had the flu, for example, or if you've ever had uh, a significant illness requiring medication, like a, the body is detoxing something or is having a die-off phase from an infection, your body has to put resources to that cleansing. So if your mind is getting a little bit 
tired right now, think of that as two things. Your body's cleansing, and it's possible that deep under your life you have been very tired because our circumstances are difficult. So we're going to take this down to the floor now for Shavasana to let that process kind of revitalize the body and then your mind, my hope is, becomes clear at the end of Shavasana. That this little tired is actually a process where you're getting recalibrated. So I'm going to recommend you have your chair for Shavasana and you place the chair for your legs and then a blanket or two for your hips like this. I'll show with one blanket in case that's all that you have. You're going to place the hips down and you go sideways and then onto your back so that your pelvis is fully supported by the blanket. Your sacrum is on the blanket. And depending on the kind of chair you have, if your feet won't go through the back, you take the top of the chair like this and you push it with your feet so that your knees get supported. And then tuck your shoulder blades under. And either you can do palms face up, out to the side, or you could do hands down onto your lower belly. And center your, your head, please, and close your eyes. Now in this process, what you could do is watch from the inside that your body, it ought to get heavier, a feeling of heaviness because it's getting more grounded, while inside there's like this river of circulation and lymph and they're doing their jobs right now. And your mind, you may feel like the mind has to doze off for a moment or it has to go to la la land for a few moments and that's okay. But I wouldn't recommend that your mind is planning or reviewing, neither shopping, <laughs> not cogitating, just resting. You have to practice simply watching, simply witnessing and not being bored. There's actually something amazing happening inside of you right now.
keep watching your body, the process of releasing. Any unnecessary tension can resolve. You can even visualize the physical body getting heavier with relaxation, like feeling limp and at ease. Knowing that in that state, your lymph system, your cleansing team continues to work. Allow your body to continue releasing, knowing that inside your lymph system and also your digestive, endocrine, and immune systems, they are reviving themselves right now. Allow the body to continue and for your mind to stay really at ease. It's not your mind that is in charge of this lymph, digestive, endocrine reset. We are the recipient of this intelligence, caring from the bodies from within.
Now relax the mind and the body a few degrees more. We're gonna rest just a short while longer from here. So imagine watching the process from the inside. Now having had some rest, where we're kind of recalibrating the body, your mind, but also we recalibrate to that relationship we have, as I like to say, with all that is and all that has been and all that will be. Just allow a slightly deeper breath in through the nose. And exhale. And then wiggle your fingers and your toes and walk your feet to the front edge of the chair. This is going to place you in a situation where the knees can come towards your chest and your heart. And breathe into your lower pelvis and your belly. And then setting aside anything that might be in your way or acknowledging where your glasses are. I'd like you to roll downhill. And use both hands to come back up to sitting. And I'm going to recommend that you sit on your chair if that's a more comfortable place for you for meditation. Come up to sit. So we have a few minutes for this to now be like an embodied meditative state. I am going to come up where I can see you closer. So I'll sit on my other chair, which is actually a physio ball. As you take a seat, you can rest your hands in your lap. And you're welcome to close your eyes. Nothing to see in meditation. Let your attention stay at rest in your body, also in your heart. And try to imagine the inner feeling tone that you have right now. Imagine that moving with you through the course of your day.
invite your mind to stay very steady, consistent. And join your hands together at your heart. May this practice go with us. We will interact with other humans today. May the merits of our practice flow outwards, selflessly, just in the act of being who we are from having had a yoga practice. Thank you very much everyone for being here. Namaste. And please appreciate yourself for taking the time for this practice. This morning I posted to the Daya website another discussion. This one from my teacher, Catherine Ingram. She was talking about the need for kindness in these really uncertain times. It's the top video on the climate activism page on the website now. You've already set up the field for your heart and mind to come from kindness today. So, so important. <laughs>